the mask on. <coughs> I'm okay. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm fine. I didn't want to tell her like this. It just fucking came out of me. Uh, some alcohol or something. Don't give me the, uh, I'm here if you want to talk look. It's not that I'm talking about. It's better this way. I don't have to deal with all this shit around me, and she doesn't have to deal with me not being able to deal. Plus, she doesn't have to look at me anymore. I don't think you're watching very closely. What? I made a point to see if you were right. She looks at you, Shaw. A lot. She says something she thinks is witty, and she looks at you to see if you heard it. When she talks about her paintings to one of us, she looks at you to see if you're listening. Am I listening? It's hard to tell. My point is, I don't think that scar makes a difference to her. Yeah, well, you're not in our bedroom during our more intimate moments. That's true, but... I don't know, Shaw, just... Just talk to her. I just gotta get the fuck out of here, Summer. This is killing me. All this shit. And these people who murder and, and make excuses for it. It's like everything we, we, we've been taught, you know, everything we grew up to believe about the value of life, it's all fucking irrelevant. These people who you blow each other up because their morality is clouded by other people who say that the people they're killing are not human, that they're, they're, they're animals or savages or anything else, godless, whatever. And they're the victims who cry and mourn and say, oh God, how could they do this to us? They must be jealous of us. They hate us because we're free. They hate us because we're pure. I don't know why the whole fucking thing is just so awful to me. This day, this is the most insane day you'll ever experience in your lifetime. It's totally normal to feel like this. Give it a couple of days and maybe you'll feel better. It's not all this shit. It's my script. You know, I think it's... It's fucking driving me insane. It's this book. I look at it, and, and I, it, it, just, it brings out these feelings of just... Oh, hopelessness. I look at it, and all I see is, is blood and death. Could be the roach got splattered on the cover. I wrote the Harrison scene. What? When? I wrote it two weeks ago. Oh. See. It it starts off with uh, Tecumseh calmly explaining to Harrison that these are the lands of the Shawnee's people. And um, it's been that way for generations. And, and just because uh, white people come over here and, and claim to own it, it doesn't make any difference to him because it's not the truth. So, so Harrison's argument is, well, how could that be? I have a signed piece of paper here indicating the sale of the land. And Tecumseh just keeps trying, keeps trying to get through to him. He's just saying, this is our land. You can't just come in here. I don't care what that piece of paper says. You can't just come in here. You'd think that um, Harrison was pushing all this legal shit like as a manipulative tactic, right? Not because he actually believed it. But no, there are accounts from eyewitnesses who say that Harrison, he actually believed what he was saying. You know, it wasn't the native's land anymore. Because this guy had a, a piece of paper that said that it wasn't. So anyway, there's almost a big fight on, on, on the generals. 
front yawn there. It's gonna make for good drama in my scene, but. So what's the problem? I don't know if I want Harrison's character to have that point of view. But that's. I know, it's just, it's too. You're hopeless. It's too heart wrenching to put in my script. I mean, I could show mutilated native children and massacred white families, but it wouldn't be half as tragic as showing this man's unapologetic, convicted denial of the truth. You know, it may sound like false optimism on a day like this, but you have to trust that the truth can penetrate anything. That's the beauty of people, I guess. They really can change if people like you show them the way. You think Adam's gonna change after the shit I said today? <laughs> no, because you sounded like a drunk asshole when you said them. You're probably right. Thanks for sticking up for me, Sean. I am so tired of his insincere expressions of affection, his one-night-stand war stories. He can be such a manipulative jerk sometimes. Hey, did he mention he's a five-minute man? What? Apparently Adam ain't exactly Cal Ripken when it comes to longevity. <laughs> <laughs> i